Oh, welcome everyone here. Just to remind everyone why it's all in English is because we broadcast all over the world. Um, that sounds good, eh? Broadcast all over the world. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of people watching that don't understand Afrikaans, so we're here. Today is uh, a special uh, time for us. As a church, we are, uh, we, this weekend we are celebrating our 21st birthday. And uh, 21 is such an amazing uh, uh, number because it's three times seven. And I really believe prophetically that we have completed another seven years, another cycle, another season. And God is taking us into a brand new season where we're going to experience Him in an amazing, in an amazing way. And uh, I've been praying a lot and asking God, God, what, uh, what does the new season look like? And uh, uh, two weeks ago when we, when we ministered, we said that God said, I'm taking you on a road that you have not been before. And so we don't really know what it's like, but one of the things that God said to us is that um, we need to build the church, not a church that will attract people, but a church that will attract God. And so that's our heart to build or to be part of, of, of uh, 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 a church where we will attract God into our midst and just enjoy His glory. Uh, and uh, where we attract Him, Jesus said, if you lift me up, I will draw men unto me. And uh, so people, not to draw people to kindness, but to draw people to God. So this is our 21st birthday and we're privileged to have Julius. Julius uh, has come with us uh, and him and Megan is here to minister and Teresa is with as well. And uh, so uh, uh, we we uh, happy to have them here. They've traveled a long road with us. Uh, our first birthday, Julius ministered. Um, and now we're on our 21st birthday and we've walked this road in this last few years. Uh, we've always been in good relationship, but these last few years is as if God just drew us closer and closer to, to each other and uh, walking together this road. So we, uh, we love Julius and we appreciate what you've built uh, into, into kindness because uh, uh, he's, uh, through God's word and through God's ministry through him, a lot has been built into, into kindness, so uh, we bless him. I'm just going to give right over now to him so that he can just uh, uh, minister to us for the next hour. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. And I remember 21 years ago when we first ministered here, your hair was a bit darker. <laughs> And some of mine have been raptured in the meanwhile. <laughs> but I was reading something, and I really think it's applicable for this morning before we just open in prayer. But David writes in Psalm 84, and he says, One day in the courts of the Lord is better than a thousand anywhere else. And if we literally take that translation, it would mean that one hour in the courts of the Lord is better than 42 days anywhere else. And with this whole COVID thing doing its round, we get one hour. But one hour can be better than 42 days anywhere else. One hour in the presence of the Most High, the one who is king above all kings, who knows exactly and precisely what is happening on earth right now. And when he speaks a word as he spoke to you as a church, and he said, it's a new season that is coming. And we don't have to know exactly what the season entails. For we should not rely on our own understanding. But in all of our ways, just acknowledge him. Know that He is with us. Know that He goes before us. Know that He is never caught off God. He's God. He's sovereign. He is majesty. He is the Lord above all. 
And as we fellowship this morning, and we sit at the feet of the one who is most beautiful, the sweetest rose of Sharon, and the bright morning star, Often I go to the Lord and I say, please, Abba, forgive me. That I find that my mind often dwells away from your beauty. I get caught up so easily in the things of this world. But yet you said, though we are in this world, we are not of this world, we are born again. So in this time of worship, thank you for the privilege and the blessing of being part of this family, of being part of Kainos. We have seen you grow. Hopefully you have seen us grow. But one hour in the presence of the Lord, it can change everything. One hour in the presence of the Most High. He shifts the atmosphere. He comes and He breathes life upon His children. I often speak about this in our little YouTube channel that we've just made and still learning. You know. We are a people that belongs to God. When we are born again, when we become the church and the bride, the Christian. We are different to previously when we were not born again. There was a time that I was not a child of God. But now I am a people that belongs to Him. And He looks after those that belongs to Him. Just listen to this before we just open in prayer. I just sense in my heart just to share this with you. How glorious and how beautiful our Lord is. He says, do not be concerned about the day of tomorrow. And I'm going to share something just from my heart, what the Lord dealt in my life with me right in the beginning of the lockdown. I went and I just sat at the feet of Jesus. I said, Lord, speak to me, because in our ministry, everything's just been cut off. Suddenly, things have just changed dramatically. We have been fully booked for the year, and now there is nothing. And the Lord had this conversation with me. He said, for many years, He said, son, for many years, you proclaimed, and you spoke to people, and you sang and you taught not to be concerned about the day of tomorrow. What about that that I have said, do you not understand? And this is what the Lord said to me. And I'm just sharing something from my heart, for myself, for us as a family. He said, if I catch you being worried, you are sinning against my word. Because I am not a God that I will lie to you. So the Lord spoke to me and he said, do not be concerned about the day of tomorrow. Do not worry. And I know that in my case, my flesh often wants to stand up and say, but Lord, have you ever been there where you just want to remind the Lord of what your circumstances look like? They look different to what the Lord said in his word when he said, do not worry. Do not be concerned about the day of tomorrow. Don't go there. You are mine. You are my beloved. You are my church. You are my people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation that belongs to me. And this is part of our worship this morning and our celebration that the Lord will always look after his bride. He will always look after his church. He is calling his church to live without fret and without worry. 
This is not something I am speaking. It is what I am seeing. It is a song of worship. When the children of God, when the church says, we don't have to fret. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, beloved, beautiful child of the Most High, in all of your ways, acknowledge Him. If there's something the Lord has taught us in the past three months or four months, it's to bring all of my ways, all of our ways to Him. And unfortunately, we only have an hour to celebrate with you, to thank the Lord for this house that the Lord has called you as a couple. And Joshua, you that we have seen grown up, that He has called you for a time like this. In our heart, we rejoice that you have been obedient to the voice of the Lord, that this house kind us and said, we will open our doors so that people can come in and fellowship because there is eternal value in fellowship. Eternity matters most. It's going to be difficult to get through this hour in an hour. <laughs> so we're going to get to the worship now, but here's, a, here's kind of a thing that I hope we as Christians, we as children of the Most High, as the Bride and the Church of Jesus Christ, will and can hear daily. Eternity is everything. This church has been going for 21 years. It feels like we started yesterday. Our children were small. Now some of our children already have children. Life is just a moment. And somehow we have spoken about this life on earth as if this is the life that matters most. But Jesus always spoke about a different kingdom. He would always share about his father's heart. And he would remind us that this is not our kingdom. We know what is happening out there. We all feel all the stuff that is happening out there all over the world. Can I say one more thing in this? Because this is part of the worship. It's good news. When darkness is getting darker, then light becomes brighter. If you have a little light that you shine in the day, it's not really visible. Not many can see that you are shining a light. But the darker it becomes, and the Lord said stuff must become darker for the church to rise up and to do what we have been called to do, to be the light in the world, to be like a city on a hill, and to be like a lamp on a stand where we, you and I, and everyone who is watching, where we can be the light for the whole house, give light to the whole house. The world, the darkness, are seeking out the light, for they see we have something that they cannot take away. It's kind of the last thought in this. Darkness can never switch light off. The moment we switch a light on, darkness flees. You can't come in here and switch darkness on. You have to switch light off. Light prevails. And our master, our king, whom we have a relationship with, whom we trust, whom we walk with, 
who cares deeply about you and your family and your life. So much so that he gave his life for us to have a life. Why should we just take those things for granted and not go down on our face before him and worship him and say, holy, 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 separate, separate, separate are you, Lord, our God. There is none like you. There have been many storms that have raged against this specific church. Kainos. But here you are. You've made it. Because of Him, you have overcome. Because of Him, your heads are lifted. Because of Him, you will stay in the storm. Because of Him, we will come to church. Because of Him, we long for fellowship. We are family, we are brothers, and we are sisters in Christ. We have an Abba Father. How glorious is that? That we have an Abba Father that deeply loves us. So I'm going to ask you, just there where you are seated, you will maybe just close your eyes and lift both your hands this morning in adoration of him. And where you are, where you are seated, beloved, and everyone who is watching, I don't know if you maybe come together as a group, but if you could just close your eyes and just lift your hands. And just set your mind and your thoughts and your heart and your life upon him who's with us. He says, when two or three come together in his name, Lord, we know that you are here. We know that you are here with your peace. We know that you are here with your life. We know that you are here with your love. And we know that you are here with your truth and your righteousness. We know that you are here with your glory. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that is impossible for you. And we ask this morning as we take an hour and we spend it at your feet. As we come into your courts. As we come into your house. As we come into your presence, our prayer is that all over this world, you will touch your church. You will keep your church. You are the keeper of your church, your bride that you are preparing for yourself. She is a spotless and a beautiful bride. And we pray as we press in, we pray as we ask, We pray as we trust in your word, your word that will not return void, your word that is absolute truth. We ask that you will have your way, your way, Abba, your way, Jesus, your way, Holy Spirit. Take kindness still deeper into the river of God, the river of life, where your living water flows. Prepare for yourself a spotless bride.
presence. Your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful presence that is sweeter than wine and sweeter than honey. Where man fails to minister the spirit of the living God, your Holy Spirit, you can minister word, you can minister life, you can minister hope. Even here this morning, you are the lifter of our heads. Though we are in this world and we see the things that surround us and we even feel the things that are happening in this world, you say, though we are in this world, we are not of this world. Whatever is pure and holy and of good repute, you want our minds to dwell upon these things and these things are you, for you are holy. You are of good repute. You are pure. And all we want to do on this day where we celebrate Jesus, where we celebrate 21 years in Kainos, a church that you have planted, that you have ordained, that you have spoken life over, that you have called, into this part of the free state. Yet in this little community, your word stretches out to the north and to the east and the west and the south. And your word cannot be silenced. For you will speak to a people all over the world and you will remind the people that belongs to you how much you love them. How you will walk with them and never leave them. It is like I can hear you speaking to us. You are singing over us this morning and you are saying to your people, do not be afraid. I want you to hear me, my beautiful bride. Do not be afraid. Do not live in fear. I did not give you a spirit of fear. I gave you a spirit of love and of a sound mind. I have made you the salt. I have made you the light. You have every reason to wake up every morning, to embrace every day, and to know that I will be with you, that I will walk with you, that I will go before you, and I will cover behind you. I will be your Lord, and you will be my people, and no one and nothing can change that. But I'm calling you deeper into my word. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the beautiful, glorious word that brings life and brings hope. So I speak to you this morning, and I say, do not be afraid. Ask of me what you must do, and I will speak to you, and I will tell you. To each one of you, I will give a word, and I will say to you, this is what I want you to do, my beloved son, my beloved daughter. Stay away. Don't miss out. For I want to give you oil and living water to drink and living bread to eat and cover you in my blood and wash you again and again and again. For I look at each one of you and I love you. I look at each one of you and I care deeply. If you could see my heart this morning, you could see my eyes this morning, if you could see how I am smiling over you this morning, if you could
would see my posture this morning, my child, my church, who will eventually be my bride. There is a banquet. If you let me prepare you, if you will heal this clay in my hands, and if you will let me prepare you, for this is what the Lord says, He says, I am preparing, He is preparing a bride, so that when the bride is pure and spotless, it is for His glory. When we are spotless and pure, He is being glorified. When we are free, it is for His glory. So Abba, we come and we are hungry this morning. In this hour we have, we know that you will stretch it to be light 42 days. There cannot be a better place right now, this morning, today, where we are celebrating 21 years of your kindness, your goodness, your mercy, your provision, your ways. We cannot be in a better place right now. I am so intensely aware of your presence and your closeness. And you breathing, for you are always there. Not only because we feel your presence, but because we know your presence. We are not a people that live by feeling. We are a people that live by faith. Faith is what pleases you, and faith is what we want to bring you. We know that you can heal, and we know that you can provide. We know that you can change governments when you decide to do so. We know that you can do all things. You can open a Red Sea. You can walk on water. You can multiply fish and bread. You can raise the dead. You can open the eyes of the blind. There is so much you can do. Nothing, nothing is impossible for you. But this morning, we do not come for what your hand can do. This morning, we come for you. This morning, we come to bow before you. This morning, we come for you. You, our Lord. You, our bridegroom. You, our King. Holy Spirit, fill us. If we could pray for your fire to burn in us, then that is what we want to pray. If we could pray for your oil to flow over us, that is what we want to pray. If we could pray for your living water to drink from, then that is what we want to pray. Whatever you ask us this morning to do and to say and to sing, that is what we want to do for you so that you are satisfied with our love and our hunger. Our even families and families that are watching we pray this morning Abba you will bring restoration to your church and your bride and your people. Help me to position my heart to your heart. To align my heart to yours. And in this first service, all we want to say and sing and do is glorify you and say, you are high and lifted up. We exalt you. Breathe over your sons and your daughters, your families, your church, your bride, 
that are here this morning and those that are watching, everyone, we ask for a supernatural encounter with you. You are not confined to our natural world. You are the one that holds the natural world in the palm of your hand and you can do anything and everything. And I believe in you. My trust is in you and your ways. It is not in horses and it is not in chariots, but it is in the Lord my God, the sovereign one who was in the beginning and in you there is no beginning and you will be until the end and in you there is no end forevermore. You are calling us into that life, that life that lasts for all eternity. This life is so short. Forgive us. Forgive me for often putting so much energy in this short life. And if we seek first the kingdom, you do provide daily in any case. You clothe us daily in any case. prepare a place, a mansion, a room for us. These were your words you said to the disciples, it is better for you that I go. For if I go, I will send you the comforter, the counsel, and the spirit of God. But I am going to prepare a place for you. Just before we go into a song of worship and adoration, I just sense in my heart that the Spirit is laying on my heart. Because we still have to get to the communion as well. What if we would pray this morning on this celebration and ask Him, open our eyes that we may behold You what you offer your church. Open our eyes that we may see you. Open our hearts that we may behold you. It's amazing when we behold him, we lose all fear. When all we fear is we fear God. Then losing stuff and losing a life is not what controls us anymore. Because when we have Christ, when we have Jesus, when we have the Father, when we have the Spirit, we have everything. It's so hard for me to stay on the stage. Because in my heart I feel just to lay my hand on somebody's shoulder and just say, keep on going. Don't give in. Don't give up. We have everything to live for. The joy we have, it comes from the Lord. The peace we have, it comes from the Lord. The life we have, it comes from the Lord. The provision we have, it comes from the Lord. But our prayer this morning, open our eyes. Please open our eyes that we may see you. That we may behold you, your beauty. What Moses saw. So it can't be done. And as 
your eyes are closed and our hearts are open for the Spirit of the Lord to move. If the Lord is speaking to you this morning, and I, I just sense this is a good place also to step into the communion, to go through the, the body of Jesus that he gave, and he says, this is my body broken for you. This, this is my body given to you. When you partake of this body, you become one. This morning as we are seated in this specific house, we are seated as family or friends. And those that are at the table with you, if you would share bread with them and say, this is the body of Christ. And as we speak about the body of Christ, it's not a ritual this morning that we complete. It is not bread that we are eating. It is the body of Christ that we are sharing, where we are confessing to one another that we are one family, we are one body, we are one church. We are not a divided church. We are one church. The bride is called the church. And I pray, beloved, how we love you. In a million words, I cannot express my gratefulness. To raise on myself and Maggie and Noel that came with us to be here this morning, to be part of the celebration where Jesus can just take you, me, all of us as clay in his hands. And he's such a wonderful potter. This potter makes all things new. How beautiful is that? gives us new mercy every morning. How glorious is that? He separates iniquities and sins from us as far as the east is from the west. When we come in repentance and ask for forgiveness and turn from our wicked ways, our selfish ways, the ways that is not the ways we actually want to live by. restorer and a friend and a king he's our Abba our Papa, our Father what father would give his son a stone when he asks for bread sometimes my heart breaks for the church thinking that we have a God who throws stones at us. When we have a Abba, a Papa, who offers living bread. So as we partake, Father, we just want to pray and ask that you have your sovereign way this morning. How we love you. How we need you. As we partake of this communion, this holy communion, where our confession, our commitment, and our vow is that we are rooted in the vine. We are a church and we love one another and we pray together and we sing and worship together. As we partake of this communion, we ask that you will just bless every family. Holy Spirit, minister into our hearts, into my heart, Megan's heart, to raise us up. Our children at home, Nola came with us this morning. Madeleine and Joshua and everyone that is here this morning.
and everyone who is watching, our prayer is fill our hearts. Fill our hearts with your word, with your love, with your mercy. Fill our hearts with your hope. What we cannot achieve in works, what you did on the cross, the complete and finished work of the cross and the resurrection. We ask that you will come now and minister healing and minister peace and minister love. Make us one. Megan just begins to sing I want you just to there we are seated and for those that are watching I don't know if you have bread but I hope you have bread and if you don't have bread with you just find a piece of bread and break it with those in the house with you this is the body of Christ let's just partake and share the bread with those that are seated at the table with us and say this is the body of Jesus. Here's my
truth shall set you free. Referring to himself, Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I feel prompted in my heart this morning. I feel such a strong motivation from the Spirit of God. That those who are seated in this room this morning, and I also trust those who are watching, everyone, if we would yield to Him to prepare us and wash us and cleanse us in His blood, then we will stand before Him spotless. What is impossible for man is only possible for God. And because of a lack of words to really express what I want to say and sing in this, He wouldn't expect anything less from us but to yield to Him, to prepare us to be spotless. And to receive what Christ has done for us. We often say that we are washed in the blood, but we don't always feel what we say. Maybe a stronger statement in that will be, we don't always know what we say. When we are washed, when we come in, we shut the door behind us and we ask him to forgive us. We stand before him spotless. And as we come to the, the grape juice or the wine that represents the blood that cleanses and washes and purifies us. We can leave every day when we spend an hour with the Lord, which is equal to 46 days in His presence. We can leave every time spotless and pure because of what He has done. Not because of our works that we know that you have good teaching in this house. But it must be sad when you have done so much for your children and they do not recognize what you have done. When you have given so much, you actually gave everything. And we still say it's not enough. Others may not see us, they may not look at you or look at me through the filter of the blood of the Lamb. But what matters most is that He looks at us through that filter. And what He sees is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bride. So let's partake this morning and ask Him to stay where you are in your own words. Pray your own prayer to the Lord and ask Him to cleanse you, to wash you, to make all things new. And if the Lord speaks to anyone this morning, anyone that is here or who is watching regarding forgiveness, forgiving, simply forgive. Forgiveness cleanses the one who forgives. It positions the one who forgives. It restores the one who forgives. It heals the one who forgives. Forgiveness was a loving law. <coughs>
Unbelievers will not come together in His name. You don't hear people from other religions or people who do not follow. 
follow Jesus, they do not speak of the value of coming together in His name. And when we come together in His name, we all fall, maybe daily, but He washes every time we turn to Him. And when we come together in His name, the one who is holy, the elders who bow down and they cast their crowns down before him, who say separate, separate, separate is our God. And the angels who say holy, separate, separate is the Lord. The Lord of hosts and of heaven and of eternity and of life is with us this morning. For that, I am ever, ever, ever grateful. So just put your hand on your heart where we are seated as we just take a moment into worship. Just press in and sit at his feet. And for those who are watching as well, that you may experience, that you may know that Jesus loves you. That you may know that he walks with you. never leaves you. He never forsakes. Everything happens either today or within eternity. He does not provide monthly or annually, he provides daily. New mercies are not found every fortnight, it's found every morning. 
He does never mention that this is the week he had made. He says this is the day that he has made. So we pray as you venture into this week that daily you will find an hour that you can spend in intimacy with the one who is all beautiful, all glorious, all worthy. Amen. Thank you.